the S and P 500 and the Nasdaq 100. We're we'll talking about what's happening specifically here on the market, what to be expecting as we go into next week, and the key focal points in the market that I'll be looking at and looking to trade specifically. Now, before we go into that detailed information, of course, we need to start looking at the key factors here. And, and when we're looking at the key factors, we need to look at some of the data that was released. Now. We have a short and a longer term aspect look short term we continue on this bull trend towards the upside breaking some pretty big significant lines as well that's kept us in this downtrend now when we look at the data what's been happening consumer outlooks everything michigan's been one of the more influential data points here and it's kind of looking decent for us so again this has definitely got the snowball rolling uh, the biggest news out of today, along with PCE, which we will cover, it was going to be this pending home sales data. Very big also. Was expected to be in the negatives, came out 2.5%. We have seen another spike in home sales as of recently. Once again, what is this in tangent with? It's most likely homeowners or people that are interested in buying homes kind of going through this fear of, okay, rates kind of dipped. I need to lock in now before they possibly go up even further, which they probably will continue on this path since we're not going to be cutting rates anytime soon. Now we go a little bit deeper into PCE. We get some more information here. Now PCE specifically, I'm not going to go very detailed in all this because that's not really why you're here most likely. But when we look at PCE, it came out as expected and it came out in line with the Fed's outlook, right? Um, that was the big point there. I posted on Twitter and in Discord earlier today, but that's where a lot of that came in. And that was just bullish momentum that propelled us throughout the rest of the day. Now, as we proceed, I think we need to be looking at longer time frame charts specifically. We can see here as we're moving, this is the SPY right now. I'm gonna look at the NASDAQ because that's more important to me. But let's look at exactly where you went to. We can see we pushed up we are breaking clearly out of this you know the year-long bear trend that we've been in and i will say it's not invalidated until you make a higher high which we have not done from this point you can see that we still have a lot of momentum right now in the short term at least now when we go look at nq which i believe this is the bread and butter and this is probably the most influential aspect here there's a few things that we need to look at on higher time frames first i know some of you guys kind of trip out when we talk about higher time frames uh but we got to so the first thing we are above the 200 moving average, the daily moving average on the NASDAQ. This is the first time in almost a year that this has happened. Okay, now this is more important than ES in my opinion. As you can see, last January, this has actually been over a year since we mounted it, right? We have not been over this level. We've only had rejections at this 200 moving average. Today, we got above it going to next week. We'll most likely open above it as well. Pretty decent. Now, what I will say, this is all happening in tangent with the Fed meeting that will be happening on Wednesday. So we have to have a little bit of caution as we move forward. But what are we looking at here? In my opinion, this is one of the more interesting bounces or recoveries that we've had on the market overall. Now, you also know my viewpoint. I anticipate more downside on the market longer term. Now, does that mean next week, two weeks? No, we're going to have to see more inflation data come in and we're going to have to see inflation spike, in my opinion, before that ever happens. And so I just don't think that's going to happen in the short term just yet. I think things are setting up for that. Now, when we look at where we're at, we're getting a lot of momentum. And as this being the more interesting bounces that we've had, it's because it's leading us for the first time since around June and July. The rally that we had back in August or sorry, October was not led by the NASDAQ. It was led by the SPY. For instance, if we look here, we can see that we had a bounce from around, you know, 52 week lows, you know, back to around 12.2 on the NASDAQ. When we look at something like ES, S&P futures, you get a better, you know, viewpoint here. You went from 52 week lows of 3,500 all the way back to 4,100. A much better bounce, in my opinion, percent wise. You can also see the way that equities moved. Now, the best way that I can give you a viewpoint into this and why this rally looks so much better than previous ones, as you can see, the S&P has rallied far less than the NASDAQ, which the NASDAQ has done basically this move and this short amount of time the ES has done. And then also looking at the big six. I think this is the best visual of what's really going on here. I continue to show you guys this because I don't know if we're taking 
the right approach to understanding what's happening here. As you can see, this is basically October through December when we had that rally to the upside into mid-December, right? You can see equities, and this is the big six, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, NVIDIA, Amazon, uh, Google, right? These are just some of the biggest tech names out there. And as you can see here, we just trended back and forth, back and forth, even while SPY was continually moving up and up and up, as we can tell here. Now, where things got interesting is when he started dropping. Granted, SPY wasn't dropping to new 52-week lows from you know December into January, but we can see that you know the big six was Apple made new lows, Microsoft got hit pretty hard, Google got hit pretty hard, Amazon, we all know Amazon got hit, and then Tesla drops down to 100, right? Massive drop. And now you're seeing extreme violence, liquidity pushing back to the upside, breaking overall local highs you had back in November and December. The last time we saw this type of move was going all the way back to July. And in my opinion, this move is stronger than the one we saw in July. And then food for thought on looking at what happened in July, look at how much the NASDAQ moved. In June, July, you went from locally 11.1 all the way back up to 13.8. Now, am I saying you're gonna need a 3,000 point move here on the index? No, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm just giving you a visualization of what's happening here and how much better this move is right now and how much more confident I'm in this move than I have been in some of the previous moves over the past few months. So when we look here, let's dive even a little bit more. Now, the best thing I believe you can do to get a good visual of what's happening and to really identify the overall trend that's kind of occurring here is look at previous highs. And I continue to say this and we're live every day here on the channel, Monday through Friday at 1030. Look at kind of how we're performing here. Just spotting them out really quick. And I, and I do this, you're probably tired of seeing me do this. Uh, but as you see, let's just look really quick at some of these local highs, right? Just really quick spot, spotting them, pointing them out so you can get a good visual. I mean, really look at what's happening here. This is just a key level at 40.29. But you can see we push up, we mount. We push up, we mount. We push up, get rejected at the key level for 40.29. We come back down, we mount that pivot point. We did not flip 3900. We had to flip that to be bearish. And then you push back up, mounting, push back up, mount, push back up, mount. And then you're just kind of going and going and going. Now, so far we're hitting all of our targets. If you remember from the past few days, what have you been saying? Targets on ES, 4100. Congratulations, we just hit it today. We went to 49.10, actually a little bit higher. Targets on NASDAQ. Honestly, the NASDAQ is just an, an absolute shock here. We've talked about the upward channel that you've been in and we kind of got a break out of it and it's really interesting at the end of the day, you end the day mounted above it. I mean, just saying, extremely, extremely strong. Now from that point, look at what's happening here on the daily. I'm just saying, you're actually getting above and making new highs locally to what happened here in December. And then if we go back down quickly, you can mark this level right there. It's looking like here on about the 15 minute that you're trying to mount that level. You're a little bit below it right now, but that's worth mentioning. So you can, if you get back above that and mount that again, this just goes right back into the thesis of more and more bullish. Now, how trading opened this morning, I was extremely bullish all morning long. Um, and I was telling Discord today and I was telling everyone on Twitter, something really interesting happened here. Now I'm gonna get rid of all indicators so you can see, but I wanna give you a visualization of this 200 moving average right here. This is the daily 200 moving average on the NASDAQ. This level hits right here. We reject, we come back down, we push, and then look what happens yesterday from market close to this open of today. The NASDAQ grinded on this level all night long, all day. This was the most bullish indicator that you could have had. And I posted this on Twitter just so you had it. So again, you're looking really good and you're looking really strong for the time being. Again, this is our first test we've had and first break above that we had in over a year. So this is what we need to be looking at and need to be watching. Now, am I saying right now that you're going to continue running up? No, I've been very bullish over the past few days. Um, but now I think we have to kind of sit on the brakes for a little bit because of what's going to be happening fundamentally this coming week. Now, going into this week, we're going to be having our rate hike decision. We've already seen this being priced in. We have the 200 or 25 point BP being priced in as we speak. We also have some jobless claims. Now, based on data, in my opinion, I think they're going to come in at 0.25. We've been anticipating this since November. Also, the most important thing from this Fed meeting, I wouldn't even say is the hike. 
it's going to be the tone and the rhetoric that they're going to be using here. So we need to be watching and listening very closely to what Powell says. However, I anticipate based on what's happening with the markets, he is going to come out again with a dovish tone. In my opinion, when you're looking at this, he's going to be happy about the data. He's going to be happy about unemployment because the data was pretty decent on unemployment the last go around. He's going to be happy about home sales also. He will say that it's probably going to continue to decline. But again, all the data and everything comes out in their favor. Now, again, you're going to say, Tyler, well, what happened to everything you said about the data that's been released and how you think it's wrong? I still believe that. But the Fed isn't really worried about what specifically this is bringing out as far as when we look at inflation, it's primarily all energy that's been dropping. Now they're gonna mention, and I'm gonna be heavily watching what happens in China. If they mention the worry and concern about China's growth, that could be very bad for the economy. But again, there's a handful of things we have to be paying attention to. And again, I don't think even the BP hike is gonna be the most important thing. It's gonna be all about the rhetoric and tone of Powell. Again, that's gonna be the focus. But right now, we're just pricing in all good news and good data. So I definitely think the move right now has been the greatest play. I think Tuesday, we're going to see a very big slowdown. Monday, we have potential for more upside. But again, Tuesday into mid-Wednesday, those are going to be almost no trade days for myself. I'm just warning you right now. Um, those are going to be pretty eventless for myself, and we need to be paying attention to that. Now, again, I'm going to go over a few stocks that I'm still liking. We're not going to go too heavy into anything too complicated today and before we get into that we're gonna look at vix really quick a lot of people are asking questions on this now vix this was your previous low that you had back in march of this past year you can see you're kind of holding that level but again on vix i'm looking down towards the 16s now i think vix most likely will come down into this range whether it be monday or tuesday personal opinion now if you don't you're going to see a little bit of a spike no matter what going into the fed meeting just based on people buying those options you're going to see it happening so again that's what i'd be looking for but again this level of the 16 down to 15 range was really significant even in a bull market that we saw in 2021 and 2022 it was respected every time he came down here it spiked so as we look at this definitely keep this on your chart everyone's talking about dxy and i think it's probably the biggest waste of time because DXY isn't directly correlated to the market right now. You're seeing the dollar being heavily devalued across all countries right now. Japan, China, Turkey just announced something. It's just continuing to come out. So again, DXY, not as important as I think people make it out to be as of right now. We were watching it up here at 109 when it was on an absolute tangent. But since then, we've seen a lot of devaluing since November into January, basically. Going further though, I do think if you break this level on DXY, you're gonna have some significant downside. I would be watching it. Looking at yields, people keep talking about 10 year yields, the TLT, 20, 30 year. Again, yields right now, the chart isn't that confusing. We saw a big push back in December, almost to 4%, and then we got rejected and pushed back down. Again, yields just continue to get rejected off that 4% mark. Very interesting. The yield inversion is still above 90, which is important. But again, we're seeing those yields come down. So this isn't really a sell signal for me yet. And again, the 30 year, probably the more important one here, getting rejected from 4% back down. Again, still see downside on these yields in the short term. The big question mark was TLT. So when we had that original boost back to the upside, we saw basically from 108, we got rejected and we're kind of making lower highs right now, but we're also making higher lows. What I will say about this, you're probably just consolidating here on TLT. You've had an absolute massive run. What's the one thing I was saying down here, even when I was bearish, is that you potentially had a bump and run type pattern, right? So what is a bump and run? Basically, you have this significant trend line, you come down, you break out of it, you hit that, you bump, and then you run. And that's what's happening right now. I don't think there's a cause to be concerned on TLT unless you start making lower lows and you start getting some very aggressive selling on the TLT right now. Also, you're approaching that 200 moving average on TLT. It's going to be significant. You got to watch for it. It's not going to be an easy break. So go figure that's where we're at right now, which also is in line with like 90% of stocks. They're all trying to break that 200 daily moving average, which when they get above it have been some of the most bullish plays we played here on the channel. Now going to stocks that I'm liking, I'm going to keep it really simple and straight to the point. Now, over the past few days, what have I been talking about heavily on Twitter? What have I been talking about across the board? And I recommend right now that you like and subscribe every single day I make videos for you so you are prepared, unbiased, win, lose, doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you, give it to you straight. 
And on Twitter, again, I'm always posting these charts. You can see literally charts all day long on stocks I'm liking as well. Now, on the charts, what have I been talking about? Target's been probably one of my favorite plays. I've talked about it over and over. We got that big break, that bull flag broke above, you know, 167. We're pushing up right now. I still like Target, a little bit of a sell-off at the end of the day. That just happened with the indexes. Target's on Target. I'm going to tell you, Target's on Target. Pretty funny. Uh, go to the four-hour time frame. I'm going to tell you right now. First target's 172. Next target's about 177. If you want to see all these plays directly, my Discord link is down below. That's where we're doing all the trading and talking all throughout the day. But again, you get a lot of these this information just here on YouTube and on Twitter for free. So only think about or consider joining Discord if you're very serious about trading and want to be around a lot of like-minded people that basically come together every day and trade. It's not just a signals group, it's education, it's everything all lumped into one. And I pretty really pride myself on what we built there. Now going further, AMD, I still think chips are extremely strong. I was telling everyone uh, about a day or two ago, I still like chips, even with all the bad news that kind of was surrounding from Intel. Uh, I still absolutely loved it. AMD, uh, a lot that I'm looking at here. If we look right now, you still got to get above 79. It's going to be your big level. It's 100% going to be a pain in the ass to get above. But right now, AMD is lagging and you're making higher lows, kind of an ascending triangle, right? So if we give you a visual of what's happening here, just pointing out right now, you can see basically at this range of about 76.6. And then you're also making these higher lows here on the four hour time frame. So you can see that right there. You're trying to get that break up as we speak. So I'd be watching for this. You want to get it. It looks very strong. In comparison, looking at NVIDIA, some of the big plays we also were talking about here on the channel. NVIDIA hitting our targets right almost into supply, almost at 207, 208. Again, beautiful, absolutely loving it. Big watch on this week is going to be Amazon. Again, this week we have earnings. We have Amazon, Apple, and some other big ones. And those are going to be a heavy focus of the channel as well, as far as getting the Fed meeting also. As you push, 102 has been the most important level here on Amazon. If you can mount back above 102.5 and we get those good earnings, I almost would say you're guaranteed to get 109, 110 in a hurry, most likely up to 112, which is a 200 SMA also. Very much you got to keep on your watch list. However, with bad earnings, I'm going to be playing this thing all the way back to the downside, okay? I'll be playing it just after earnings, though. There's no reason to force things before earnings or try to assume what's going to happen with those earnings. Although I would say I do expect Amazon to have bad earnings. That's just my personal opinion. And again, if they reject, it's going to be brutal. It's going to be ugly. Last time we played, it was back here at 102, and this thing got demolished. Looking a little bit further at something like Apple. Now, Apple's not one of my favorite plays here, but I do want to go over it. We've been talking about this quite a bit. We hit our targets at 145, almost came into 147.5, and it got even closer to that 200 daily moving average. Very interesting. And this is kind of the reason why I'm saying be cautious in the moment with trading, because everything's coming into these 200 moving averages. Now, we've had great reactions on some of the plates, like Nvidia, it's just gone straight through, targets going over. Those are great names, but we have to kind of come to grips with reality and say, there's a possibility you get rejected here, and we have a lot of news riding this week. So again, I think this week is a time we kind of step on the brakes and be a little bit more cautious. I'll have a lot of stuff posted on Twitter so you're kept up to date, but just know, this week, I definitely am coming in with the approach of caution, caution, caution. I'll see you on Sunday. Have a good one, traders.